Good morning and happy late Advent. We're yes, in the, happy uh, Friday. Yeah, a week a week out from Christmas, which is exciting. <laughs> so I hope you're staying healthy. It seems like we're all hearing about more and more people that are getting sick. So hopefully uh, you're staying healthy. We are so far, thank God. Yeah. Um, all right, so we kind of related to that. The Knights of Columbus at the Christmas Masses, they're going to hand out a prayer card. I think they'll actually be on tables. You won't actually be grabbing them from people, but a prayer card to, uh, to Mary during a pandemic. So there's a special prayer for protection. We hope you can take that home and pray that with your family. Um, very appropriate for these times. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna a lot of what we're gonna be talking about today is what we're gonna be doing for Christmas masses. Mm -hmm. uh, just the logistics for it and everything. So. Uh, First thing, as usual, uh, we do this every year, there will be a second collection uh, to help support Kendrick Lennon Seminary here in St. Louis. It's been a great tradition of our archdiocese that we have a second collection on Christmas masses. We're gonna have a second basket up there, uh, one that's designated for the, uh, for the Christmas collection. Uh, there won't be a normal offertory collection like normal. Uh, so again, we're just using the baskets like we have been at the front and then in the back of the church. Uh, or again, if you want to specifically mention that this is for the seminary, write seminary on your envelope uh, or use one of the, are there going to be special envelopes yeah, we'll, there? We'll yeah, we'll some special we'll envelopes. special envelopes too. In the um, vestibule. In the vestibule, just, you can note that it's for the seminary. Uh, but we encourage you to be generous if you can. Uh, priests just don't come out of nowhere. Uh, they don't come out of the sky. They have to be formed. Uh, and for us, that happens at our wonderful seminary in Kendrick Lennon. Um, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful place as relatively recent graduates ourselves, we can attest that it does a very good job, at least we feel, of forming our priests. Uh, and, you know, the, the formation of priests is honestly one of the most important things we have in the church. Um, you know, our archbishop can't be in every parish every weekend, so it's the best gift that he can give us is is good priests, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, please be generous to that if you can. Great. And then uh, we have our normal seating for those with disabilities in the front on the right-hand side when you walk in. Yep. We may allocate another pew or two uh, close to the statue of Mary and Joseph, the new Holy Family statue. Um, but as always, it's um, we have a very limited seating uh, for those with disabilities at the larger masses. It's just that one or two pews yeah. normally. So just keep that in mind. Um, so our Christmas, our Christmas schedule will be as normal, uh, 4, 6, and 10 p.m., and then 8.45, 10.30, and 12.15. So the 4 p.m. Mass, I'll have the 4 p.m. Mass. It'll also be live streamed on all of our platforms. Father Schrader will have the 6 p.m. Mass. That one will not be live streamed. The Father Sullivan has oh, Sorry, Father Sullivan. Father Sullivan will have the 6 p.m. Mass. I, I misread that. Uh, the 10 p.m. Mass, the Mass during the night, Father Schrader will have, and it will be streamed. Um, and then Christmas Day, uh, Father Sullivan will have the 845. That will not be live streamed. Uh, and then Father Schrader will have the 1030, and I'll have the 1215. Both of those will be live streamed. Uh, so again, that's kind of our Christmas schedule. It's in the bulletin. It's on the parish website. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of our schedule, at least for Christmas. We're doing normal, uh, normal schedule. Yeah, and so we will have... Um Lots of need for hospitality ministers. If you happen yes. to be available, just let us know in the parish office. If you're not, that's okay too. But if you feel like helping and are available, we'd really love to have your assistance. We're also going to, uh, as we always do during the week of Christmas, leave the church open for quiet prayer. So maybe you say, hey, this year I'm not comfortable coming to Mass, but I want to pray by the Nativity or I want to bring my kids to see the Nativity, as many families yeah. do. Uh, church will be open if you once again while you're up here you say hey I'm not gonna be at mass but I'd like to drop off my gift for the parish uh, just drop that through the the mail slot of the parish office even if the office is closed me and father Schneier will be checking the mail and, and kind of cleaning things up in that regard but we do hope that you can come by the church for quiet prayer in the week leading up to Christmas and after Christmas we continue to our celebration yeah, church will the be octave open. of Christmas uh, yes. Christmas is really a Eight, directly at least an eight-day mm -hmm. celebration for us. So um, so our, our capacity in the church is going to be 25% of normal, which is about 150 people. Um, so if we get beyond that, then we're going to send folks down to the lower church hall in Bollinger Hall, uh, where we'll have some additional seating there. Communion will be brought down uh, to everyone down there, so don't worry about that. Um, we are not requiring advanced reservations for folks coming to Mass. 
Um, so just get here whenever you get here. Uh, we are also though asking people not to save seats. Um, if you're gonna come here early, make sure that you have your entire family, your entire party with you. Uh, we're not saving seats this year just because of the capacity restrictions. Uh, we wanna be able to have an accurate count and be able to again, accommodate as many people as we can in the safest way possible. So no saving seats uh, due to the reduced capacity. Uh, you know, we're asking folks to please practice social distancing at all times. When you get to mass, just go right to your seat. Don't congregate uh, beforehand. I know you might see some people you haven't seen in a while, um, but again, we're asking folks to please not congregate uh, before or after masks. And of course, masks will be worn at all times. Um, if you can, try to bring some hand sanitizer with you. Uh, we don't want to run out of all of ours here at the parish. Uh, it's basically liquid gold at this stage of the game. Uh, so if you could maybe bring a little travel thing, a hand sanitizer with you, uh, rather than using everything from the parish, that would be great. We want to have enough uh, for everybody. Um, the cry room will be closed. Um, just not going to really be an easy thing to do with social distancing and everything. Um, so mass might be a little louder than usual. That'll be great. If your kids aren't crying, the church is dying, as I like to say. Um, and again, there's no offertory collection. So uh, you put your envelopes in the baskets, either in the front or in the back of the church. Okay, that sounds good. And remember, uh, sometimes people get confused with the live streaming. We try to have multiple ways you can plug into that, either directly through the parish website uh, if you don't have social media, that's probably your best bet. You can also go onto the parish Facebook site if you have Facebook, and it'll be live streamed there, or we also have a YouTube channel. So those are the three ways that you get connected to the live stream. Uh, and if you need any help, please give us a call. We'll we'll help you out with that. Yeah. So I think that's about... Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I just... Yeah, just, just kind of a reminder for folks. It's going to be a little bit hectic and chaotic. Uh, we're mm -hmm. trying our best... Uh, you know, by comparison, last year, the 4 p.m. had 1,200 people at it. Uh, the 6 p.m. and the 10 p.m. had 400. Uh, 845 had 500. 1030 had 400. And then 1215 had 800. Mm -hmm. um, we will not be able to accommodate that amount of people at that specific time. Um, so just try to be patient with us. Um, we're anticipating this being a one-off. Um, with the you know the great news of the vaccine rollout and everything, so just be patient. This is kind of a one year only deal. Uh, we will next year will hopefully be different. Uh, it'll be back to normal. So and we're just asking for patience with everybody, uh, so that we can all celebrate a Christmas as merrily as possible, but also as safely as possible too. Great. So, so baptisms this uh, past week we had two, which is wonderful. Uh, Avery May Brunk, daughter of Travis and Kim, and Violet Elise Schrader daughter of Jacob and Mary. Uh, and then we also had a wedding this past weekend. I was privileged to kind of celebrate for with uh, Michael Dickey and Elena Eschbacher. So congratulations to them and everyone celebrating sacraments this time of year. We've had our first confessions for our second graders and uh, just a wonderful time as we prepare for our Lord's coming to uh, celebrate those those wonderful sacraments. All right, the readings. This readings week. this weekend. Fourth Sunday of Advent. Yeah, usually uh, fourth Sunday, it's often an afterthought. Sometimes the fourth week of Advent is only a couple hours uh, as we roll right into Christmas. <laughs> so it's nice. This, this year we actually have almost a full week of yeah. the fourth week of Advent. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be preaching on the gospel. The gospel is the Annunciation of Gabriel to Mary. Uh, and I, I, It's going to be talking about, you know, I'm really going to ask the question, what if Mary said no? Um, it's an interesting question that we often don't think about. Uh, what if Mary said no to the angel Gabriel? Uh, we know that Mary had full freedom in that moment to say yes or to say no. But I'm going to talk about what was going on in Mary's heart, uh, what she knew in that moment, uh, and just how we can be grateful for Mary's yes uh, that she gave. Because uh, if we didn't have Mary's yes, we wouldn't have the salvation uh, mm -hmm. that Jesus gives us. So when people say, Mary, did you know? Uh, she knew. Stop asking her. Are uh, you going to sing that song? No. The homily? No. It's borderline heresy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> borderline. <laughs> I'll make sure and request them all your masses. <laughs> if you're listening, Joe, don't give me any yeah. of that, <laughs> Doctor Joe. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm I, I'm not decided on what I want to preach on this weekend, but I did kind of uh, like the first reading where King David he's been fighting all these wars and finally gets to enjoy the peace, and he has a really noble thought. He, he thinks I'm sitting here in a house of cedar in a wonderful home, and God is sitting in a tabernacle in a tent. I'm going to make God a worthy place to live. And uh, so basically you have David has this wonderful intention and God tells the prophet, tell him, no, it's not your job. Stay in your lane. 
uh, I can make a house for myself. And then God, because he's so generous, says, I'm going to, you want to make me a house, I'm going to make you into a household. Um, so kind of a neat thing. But what it kind of tells me is sometimes we want to help God. We want to help him do his job. We, th- we have good intentions, like, yeah. God, let me do this. And we need to be humble enough, like David was, to hear from his prophet that, you know, that's a good thought you have, but God doesn't want that. Uh, God has something else in store. Um, and we even see that indirectly in our gospel. We hear about Elizabeth being with child. Elizabeth, who's this barren old woman, and Zechariah, her husband, when he heard God's plan, he, he thought it was ridiculous and actually ended up not being able to speak for for months because he doubted God's plan. He, he had something else in his mind, whereas Mary, she was open to God's plan, as, as audacious as it was. So anyway, the readings give us an opportunity to let go of our sense of control and our sense of knowing what's best and allow God to work his plan as surprising or unexpected as it may be. Yeah. All of us are called to make our own fiat, just like Mary did. So, yeah. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing you guys this weekend and uh, and hopefully, yeah, next week for Christmas. Uh, we're looking forward to it, to mm-hmm. seeing all of you, to celebrating this great feast with you. Know of our prayers for you. Uh, and we hope to see you around this weekend, either in person or virtually. And uh, hope you guys have a good weekend. Oh, and also, oh, I yeah. mean, just have we've gotten so many snacks. Can we have. It? I it's, think I've gained five pounds. It's an I'm insane joking. amount of snacks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is insane. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, anyway, if we look a little bigger, if we look yeah. a little fuller in the spirit, yes. um, we, you, More you are to blame, yes, for yes. feeding us so well. Uh, so anyway, uh, I just... Yeah, yeah we're, we're so grateful for all that. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, it's, we're we're very grateful. Else. Yes, yeah. it really, really, really is. Uh, all right, so, now you can have a good yes, weekend. Yes, have a good weekend. Take care.